Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you One Dime Band. Okay. All right, folks, we're going to start off with, uh, this is the first song off our first CD. Uh, the CD is called Gonna Take Sweet Time. This is uh, Driving Blind. <laughs> Keep singing this song Been on this road A little too long Your pretty tape Is on my mind This broken highway Been keeping time Your sweet taste Been on my mind Yeah, straight on Gonna keep straight on Straight on Gonna keep straight on It's a time, time Gonna take sweet time baby. Time, time Gonna take sweet time yes. It's a time, time While I'm driving blind Sometimes four, so left or right, can't be sure. Two, three lanes, sometimes more. It's so a black road, endless night. Been hypnotized by them lights. Oh, black road, it's so an endless night. Straight on, gonna keep straight on. Yes, yeah, straight on, gonna keep straight on. It's a time, time, gonna take sweet time, baby. Time, time, gonna take sweet time. Yes, it's a time, time, while I'm driving blind. Light a lamp, mama, it's all right. Say, so I'll be home by tomorrow night. Keep our love light. It's so a burning bright. Low, straight on. Gonna keep straight on. So straight on. Gonna keep straight on. Time, time, gonna take sweet time, baby. Time, time, gonna take sweet time, gonna time, time, while I'm driving blind. It's a 
time, time, gonna take sweet time, yeah. Time, time, gonna take sweet time, yeah. Time, time, while I'm driving blind. All right, we'd like to continue with a song by Tab Benoit. This is called Hustling Down in New Orleans.
Hello and welcome to another edition of Talkin' Tunes. I am your host, Frank Walsh. Thanks for tuning in today. Now folks, you just heard the winners of the Boston Blues Society Blues Challenge, the One Dime Band, or One Dime Band, let's get rid of the the. And uh, they are going to be on their way to Memphis to represent the Boston Blues Society. And these guys are making a name for themselves around the blues community. They've been playing at Soundcheck Studios. They have gigs all over the place, and we're going to talk about them. So it gives me great pleasure to introduce to you Paul Gallucci and John Brockler. Hey, guys. How are you doing? Thanks for coming in today, man. Not a problem. Thanks Good to see you. Thank, Thank you so much. You came all the way down a little bit from the North Shore. we got a Swamp Scott and a Malden, huh? Yes, sir. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. You made it here before I did. <laughs> we did. We were surprisingly early. Yeah, we were in shock. Well, we that's what happens when you leave on Sunday. <laughs> 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 I hope it wasn't too cold sleeping uh, in the car over the weekend. <laughs> yeah. But uh, but anyway, it's thanks a, a lot for being here. Oh, absolutely. And um, I have to ask you right off the bat, you know, okay. one dime band. Mm -hmm. You know, where did you come up with that name? I mean, with the two of you, why didn't you come up with like two nickels or, you know, five quarters? Yeah, so we joked. How did you come up two with uh, nickels? <laughs> how'd you come up? How'd you come up with one dime band? Let's start there. Well, I know my recollection. And so around 2000 is when John and I sort of kind of started this whole thing. We did a we did a CD in John's basement at the time and uh, it was all covers. It was you know kind of inspired by like Junior Wells, Buddy Guy. Um, uh, other acoustic acts, we had Taj Mahal, um, and so we we had a, a group of covers. I think it was like ten songs, and we were looking for a name for this project. Yeah, and I want to say that you might have brought up the Lowell Folson. It was a more di one dime at um, that time, or it was blind uh, the blind lemon Jefferson one dime blues. So okay. that's yeah, kind of yeah. where really it came from. That John was throwing out ideas and. Blues related, so mm -hmm. I would say it probably was the one, the uh, Blind Lemon Jefferson song. Does that work for you as well? Yeah, yeah, I had a cassette at the time of Blind Lemon Jefferson. Uh -huh. I think we were just reading the, the names, which I like can't even read a... now. On right, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> well, back 20 yeah. years ago, we could. I'm with you on that. <laughs> and uh, I just read a couple titles off, and I, you know, and when we got to one dime, we just started, which was original. We were originally just one dime at that. Yeah. Point. There was no, we added the band only a couple of years ago, actually. Yeah. So. yeah. Now, you guys have known each other for a long time. You go way back. You know, as you said, uh, you have a very storied history. We, we um, do. You know, you know without revealing, you know, revealing where the bodies are buried or you know, any of those kinds of things. Uh, yeah. Talk a little bit about your background and how you guys got together and, uh, you know, how did you start creating the music that you have today? Well, music, yeah, it all began with music because, right. uh, well, actually, both of us were in, in where we grew up in New York, mid Hudson Valley. Really, um, we were both born in the city, but we, me in Brooklyn, John in Queens. Well, born in Brooklyn, lived in Queens. Yankees or Red Sox? Well, I was I converted. Mets. My family not very happy about it. They called me a turncoat, but okay. I became a Sox fan. From okay, when my son was young. <laughs> Yankees, was Mets, Red Sox. <laughs> Mets. He's Mets? Queens. Okay. Queens all we can live with the Mets. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I get a pass in Boston. I just got to deal with 86 with it, which is ironic. It's the year we moved up here was 86. Yes, it really. Was. Yeah. yeah. You uh, came up in 86. Wow. Yeah. That was a good exactly. year to come up. Yeah. So, anyway, so go ahead. No, so, yeah, I guess it was chorus. We met in, in chorus uh, called Choir yeah. in, in middle school. We both, in our school district, we both went to two separate elementaries and we met once we got into middle or junior high. Mm -hmm. So that was where we met, but we didn't really start playing music together until, what was it, sophomore year in high school? High school. I tried to recruit you for the day was, I was in at the time. We needed yep. a singer. Yeah. And right I knew him from chorus. Yeah. Now, when sing. did you pick up music? Were you playing young? Did you, when did you start off playing? Well, for me, I, was, I started singing when I was birth, basically. Really? I mean, yeah, my dad was a big... My dad was a huge like Sinatra fan. That was his era. He was a 40s sure. swing swing music guy, big band guy. But my father was always he was always singing. So, you know, for me it was just I started singing at a super young age and then uh, started playing guitar about 13, mm -hmm. you know, just to accompany and play songs, you know, and sing to them and that kind of thing and Any music in the family? Uh really just my dad was yeah. really like the big My sister can sing beautifully, but she just 
Yeah, Did your father he, sing or play, or just appreciated the music of the era? He was like a dabbler. He was like the he was an artist, so he he did commercial art. He was like a, a madman actually. Wow, down really? And, you know, worked in <laughs> nice. He, he was that was his era. He was a commercial artist, um, art director, but he dabbled in music. They had a little jazz club, mm -hmm. and uh, so my dad had this crazy a uh, white upright bass that he had in wow. the house that he would. Again, dabbled with that, and he was, you know, like the crooner guy. Mm -hmm. So that was he was the kind of probably the mo the first musical influence for me was was dad. You well, know? So other why than the that, guitar? Yeah. You know, why the guitar versus piano or some other instrument? Well, that's funny too because we had a Harmony Rocket electric hollow body electric guitar in the closet that was my brother's actually. But the funny story with my brother and sister, who were a little older than I was. Uh, when they wanted to, they had both had instruments that they wanted to play, but for some reason they got something different. So my sister wanted to play piano, so mm -hmm. I guess that wasn't doable in Brooklyn at the time in the apartment. So she got an accordion, which she hated. So she didn't go any further with the accordion. And then my brother wanted to play trumpet, believe it or not, because he was he he kind of liked Louis Armstrong, he liked that kind of thing, and he got a guitar. And he still to this day is not really sure why. Really? Right. So that guitar <laughs> ended up in the closet. And then, of course, me being a curious kid or whatever, I was like, wow, this thing is cool. There's a guitar in here. And so I started. And it just became more like from came natural to, to you a, to a company. Was it easy guitar, for you to learn? Not easy. No, no, no not easy. But Sorry for it you. was it was chords. And I got a I, at 13. I got a, a cool teacher who was like a folky guy who was uh, Mike Manoff was his name. And uh, and he was a friend's, a neighbor's guitar teacher, and so kind of hooked up with him, and he, I just said, yeah, I just want to learn Beatles songs. I want to learn songs that I can sing with, you know? Yeah. You grew up to and the Beatles? I absolutely did. You did? Yeah. 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 It was, maybe it was, it's a generation before, but my sister, for me, it was all 45s that my sister and my brother-in-law had. Yeah. Kind and of a bittersweet day. Today is uh, the passing of George Harrison. Oh, that's today. Wow. Today, yeah. 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 Just uh, probably my favorite Beatle now at this really? point. Well, now I think so, yeah. What about you? How'd you get into it? Uh, tell you a tale. Um, so they had these people who were selling uh, musical lessons would show up at your house, your doorstep. Really? Oh, right. yeah. The old full and of brush man, right? They came by, and I remember my mom called me into the living room, and they said, so-and-so uh, uh, is here from a music place. Do you want to play any instruments? So I said, I want to play guitar like Johnny Cash. Nice. Mm. Um, but that's not what they were selling. <laughs> they, were, they were selling organ lessons. Organ, you know, okay. Those house organs oh, wow. with the foot pedals that's and everything. Right. Wow. Yeah. I'm like, I don't want to play an organ. I don't think I've ever even seen an organ. So I had to make a deal. The deal was I take organ lessons for six months, and if I don't like it, then I can switch to guitar. So basically, as soon as to the date six months are up, I'm like, all right, got to switch to the guitar. And uh, my parents bought me a guitar I started lessons mm -hmm. the guitar lessons I don't know I think it was in third grade or so wow. at the time I was, mm -hmm. was kind of young at the time and uh, the lessons were a half hour and I had a half hour of music theory afterwards it was the same thing with the organ mm -hmm. so I was able to absorb some of that music theory and use it later on when I got the, the course and I was in mm -hmm. uh, music classes in high school as well mm -hmm. uh, one of them was theory at the time mm -hmm. um, I don't use it so much nowadays, but mm -hmm. now you a Beatles guy too. You grew up in that same generation, and you know what? Uh, what was your sway? I know you mentioned folky, and yeah, you, know, I you have a little folky up, look to you. Uh, <laughs> I grew That's up. That's a compliment, by uh, the way. I love thanks. folk music. Uh, listen to uh, country music. Really, all the country music from the fifties and sixties and seventies, wow. so to speak. Mm -hmm. And people I like were Johnny Cash. Sure. Um, at that time, Jerry Lewis was a country art, so he's on the country station as yep. well. Um, Elvis Presley was on the country station. He yep. had country songs. So mm. I started liking those guys, not knowing their history at all. Mm -hmm. uh, once my father saw who I was listening to and who I liked, he got his reel-to-reel -reel tapes out of the attic, and he said, you might want to listen to some of these. So <laughs> I got a, we didn't have a reel player. I got one from my uh, scoutmaster at the time. Mm -hmm. And I put on the songs, and they're all from the 50s from when he was a teenager. And that's when I heard Little Richard and Fats Domino and Chuck Berry wow. and uh, early Elvis, which I couldn't even believe was the same as the 70s Elvis and mm -hmm. uh, early Jerry Lee. So I got into 50s rock and roll with a, 
and you know, especially in New York, you get into the doo wop scene. You know, you could back then you're mm -hmm. probably exactly you're Dion probably right was, on, yeah, yep, the Dion, yep. and you get a lot of those street corner singers and all that. Mm -hmm. The doo wop. Right. Well, we would do some of that stuff in chorus, which really? is how mm -hmm. I first remembered him. He, him and his, and his buddy, he listened to the Beach Boys a lot. Mm. And, Harmonies, yeah. And me and uh, one of my friends, we listened to a lot. He listened to the Beatles a lot. And I knew songs by both of those guys, but the 50s <coughs> versions of the songs. Mm. So when uh, we had a substitute teacher, we'd be sitting there singing these songs and doing harmonies, and then him and his buddy would join in. So we also we had three or four people singing right. harmonies and doing mm. old yeah. 50s and 60s tunes. Yeah. Now, many people today, you know, you hear songs that, um, you know, are covered. And many people of, the, of this generation, probably this and maybe the last generation, have no idea that a lot of these songs probably came from the 50s, oh, 50s yeah. and 60s. Right. Yeah, you know, it's, it's and uh, you know some of the songs I still learn. Like you know, I didn't realize uh, until I don't know, not too long ago, that uh, you know the Jay Gile, one of the Jay Gile songs, was uh, a 1950 song. Came from the 50s, like the old doo wop R and B. Uh, it'll come to me the name of the song, but it was like oh. Uh, do, 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 oh yeah, do, do. that came out of the fifties. I do, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I do. That's what that's do, that was one of the songs we would sing in, uh, yeah. in really? my car, drive right around. Even yeah. in high school, we would sing really? that song because. But did you realize? Well, you probably knew it then, but I mean, but I think people today, I never realized that, and I'm mm -hmm. I've huge music. I mean, I grew yeah. up. I knew it by Jay Giles as well because it was on the radio. Right. It became a hit in the right. early 80s or so. Mm -hmm. But that cover though, I mean, I, I never knew that that was an old 50s song and there were so many other yeah. songs that yeah, I didn't yeah. realize go back to the 50s and 60s, you know, and um, I'm sure many people don't realize some of the songs that, you know, were recorded way back then and how influential they were mm -hmm. on right. the music of today. Yeah, people don't even associate doo-wop so much with rock and roll, but it really was like <laughs> one of the... It was it. Yeah. The I mean, you know, the and founding then, between gospel and doo-wop and... Well, the Beatles kind of you know, changed that, and, you know, Beatles and sure. Elvis, you for know, sure. and, the, and uh, then, you, then you get into the folk scene with Dylan. Mm -hmm. You know, you listen to American Pie, it kind of gives you mm -hmm. that history of what happened, you know. Yeah. yeah. The day the exactly. music yes. died. Yeah, yeah. You know, um, but uh, as far as you know, developing your music, um, how would you describe mm. your music? And, and how, well, how would you describe the evolution of your music? Because I've heard you a few times now, and mm. you're different. You know, you are not in that cookie cutter mold. You know, you play the blues. And that's a and, compliment. Thanks. And Appreciate that. You're not in. You're not in that cookie cutter mold. Mm. And it reminds me of a friend of mine who who's on. His name is Chuck Vermet. He's a good guitarist and vocalist. And I asked him to describe his music one day, and, mm -hmm. and he couldn't do it. And he was almost, you know, insulted by the question. Oh, wow. Well. You know, yeah. I mean, he, he didn't want to be put into some kind of a category. He didn't, have, he didn't want a yeah, label I, and yeah. all of that. I mean, he's a friend of mine. I say that, I you know, tongue-in-cheek. Yeah. But yeah. talk about the evolution of your music and, you know, how you got to the styles where you are now. Is Again, it's unique, and it's um, when you hear it, you want to sit back and go, hmm. I haven't heard that before. Mm. You know what I mean? Well, that's, that's a compliment. No, it is a huge compliment. Well, first I of mean, all, do you agree with that? Uh, I guess I, maybe from our perspective, I don't know if it, we know that it's that sounds that different to people, but well, I'm it's really different. Happy I don't know about that. that different, but it's different. You know, it, it's like when you listen to like you know you know Alana Cats Cats and oh, yeah. you know oh, yes. yeah. they, you know they do yeah. the Americana, they do a lot of Americana, and yep. it's blues and it's got a different spin and it's not that cookie cutter traditional blues. And yeah. you listen, you go, hmm. That's different. I, I kind of put you in that same kind of a category with an Alana Katz cast, sometimes a Racky Thomas and those guys, you know? Yes, I think we... Good company to be in, by the way. Oh, oh yeah. absolutely, man. I, I think that we kind of feel that that's the closest category that we really are is Americana. Americana. Because it seems to encompass a lot of different roots mm -hmm. kind of music. So we call it kind of roots, you know. Do you know but Mark it, T. Small by any chance? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Mark, awesome Mark was on the show player. a couple of times. He's a great yeah. guy. He's he's historian as well. Wow. And Peter Parchek, too, is another one. Great historian for that kind of music. Sure. Peter did a Chuck Berry tribute <clears throat> a couple of years ago at the Burn that I went to, which yeah. was awesome. Mm. I saw him last week. Him, it was he, Danielle Moralia. Um, mm -hmm. Oh, at the distillery. And right. Alana. Right. Okay. Right. And yep. it was just an absolutely phenomenal show. They played almost three hours nonstop. Wow. It just blew the roof off the place. Wow, wow. that's yeah. amazing. So again, you know, yeah. development, well, development. Yeah, well, I, right, it's Well, the first time we diverse. jammed together on the guitars was my bedroom and 
we used to wear jamming Buddy Holly song, Oh Boy, mm -hmm. um, oh, bon that we somehow just couldn't make it through. Really? Just because we started getting the laughing fits and stuff. <laughs> uh, what was kind of funny is that I had a tape recorder running this whole time. So we started with some basic easy songs to play with and mm -hmm. sing to and harmonize a little bit that yeah. I could actually harmonize to. Um, it's not as natural for me as it is for Paul or uh, our friend Tim who sings with us. Um, so we started just jamming on that type of stuff and uh, that I don't know where Chuck Berry and yeah. maybe some little Richard mm -hmm. anything that was and see for me because well he was a little more advanced guitar player obviously because he'd been taking lessons since he was eight or nine and then so for me it was like hey man I just kind of became a rhythm guitar a player rhythm, yeah. from the beginning like because I was not adept with scales and so I started, you know, it's like, oh, these are three chords I can play. Oh, I know those three. <laughs> so John was like, oh, okay, so you play rhythm, and this is how you do kind of mm -hmm. like a, a chunking fifth with the, you know, with the rock and roll rhythm, and we started with that. So, but I think that coming to our music now, I think what's what's well, cool revolution, is like, well, that was in the '60s the and diverse. probably into the '70s, you know, and the music trends yeah, was, changed over the years. You, know, you get yeah. your British rock, then you get, oh, yeah. you know, right. a whole Love different trend. Did you kind of? Yeah stay the same or did you kind of evolve as the music evolved and change a little bit as the music evolved over the years and in the, in the decades you know probably yeah. the disco era and you get all of that kind of yeah, stuff I mean I think we were appreciators of anything that was good that we felt was like whatever good, so good whatever music, good yeah. song like I was always into songs because I grew up aside from the 45s from my sister and brother-in-law it was like for me it was AM radio so mm -hmm. John was in a different world because his dad would they would listen to that local station which was country and roots yeah so he had that which was amazing so he introduced me to more of that stuff I knew some of the maybe the Chuck Berry or the little Richard from the Beatles because my sister's you know early Beatles records but then it, for me it was all like top 40 you know mm -hmm. for a long time mm -hmm. so that's why for me there's a lot of melody uh, related stuff because that's where I get I think for songwriting I always kind of don't necessarily write hooks intentionally but melody is always important to get right. in there to get mm -hmm. a song because if I feel like that makes a song memorable or makes it better mm -hmm. so was that to I guess then our early band days in high school mm -hmm. where we were doing like uh, rock and roll but it was the rock of the rock of the day right we yeah. had a weird yeah. uh, set list back then because we did modern songs, but mm. we also had these gigs at a VFW hall and uh, some other places, and they mm. would hire us. We were only 15 or 16 at the time. Wow. Well, yeah, we were actually and making so we 300 play, bucks a gig. We something. would play 50 songs because okay. like, hey, we that play was a bunch gen, of 50 yeah. songs for these people, and right. uh, this is how they go. This is the right. key. And the, yeah. So we would do that, and then, you know, in the the same set you would then you know have a, like a, a cheap trick song or, or something uh, <laughs> you know it, right but it, it just it kind of worked and then we, we played at like middle schools and stuff we did more modern music yeah. at the time yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. and you mentioned um, you played with a band like um you know you obviously had you know drummer and you know you had a regular band oh yeah when yeah. did you start evolving into uh into a duo and I know we can get into some of your other history in a minute, but we know when did you guys evolve into a into a duo and said, "Hey, it's just going to be you and me." And and also, when did you pick up the uh, harmonica? Oh, okay. So the duo was around 2000, actually. But we it's about 22 again, years. Again, we take, have, yeah. yeah, it's it's hard to believe that the two two K two YK was that is that long ago. But well, but we did have a sorted thing where when we came to Boston 86, like we were talking about, we came with a band. I was in a rock and roll band that John was also a member of. And then that band kind of Which fizzled. one? I want to give a shout out to it? Well, it's no longer in existence, but it was called Crash Palace at the time was okay. the name of that band. Don't so remember. that was post our high school. So this is when we broke away from our homes. I moved out of the house at 22 and came to Boston. Ironically, I played keyboards in the band. Really? Yes. Synthesizer, yeah. Yeah. so to wow. speak. I and went, that band? I went back, and, yeah. yeah John could play a rock and piano, man. Wow. He actually and, uh, <laughs> did you get into the Boston scene? Were you there back in the old uh, Ultimate Spinach and Ides of the Beacon Street Union and no, Quicksilver they, and all that other stuff? They wound up doing a, a show at the Channel. Which we did like play the, a Channel, the big, the big gig at the, the new the time. band night, I think it was. Really? Okay. It might have been like a Monday night yeah. kind of thing, and you got to play the Channel stage. Yeah, and The uh, Ratskeller? Did you do the Ratskeller at all? Or we used to hang out there. Lucifer's or later Across years. the Street? Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's right. You guys played down Again, there were multiple. So there was that band, but then eventually there were. We have another very close childhood friend that was a great guitar player that 
I kind of joined forces with to start writing with, writing songs. So we had several bands, but that was, then you're getting into like the early 90s. And then John was in several blues bands and also a, a roots country band as well. So Yeah, you've got a pretty um, good history. Why don't you write a lot of some of the bands you played with, you know? You um, so we started a blues band in the early 90s. So we started writing songs, right. and I was trying to we're trying to figure out something to do. He was no longer in in a band at the time, and I was just out of a blues band. Which uh, one I was in it was called Blue Avenue. I've heard of that. And uh, we played the new music night at Harper's Ferry. Cool. Uh, I don't know, 1990, 91, somewhere around those days. Uh, Annie Rains was not 18 yet at the time because she wow. came up for her last song and played with us. Was she with Paul <laughs> Rochelle at that point or no? No, 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 not yet, no. Wow. So um, I was in that band only for a couple months and then we broke up and then a few months went by and then we decided to try to write some songs uh, instead of just doing uh, covers or blues covers. Just mm. the Boo Valentine, we did a lot of standards, a lot of 50, uh, blues music from the 50s. So it uh, uh, got me really listening to the guitar parts because we had two guitar players. I had to learn one part and the guitar player played the other part. I'm like, oh, there's two parts. I never used to, never figured out two different parts before. Mm -hmm. uh, we would just kind of jam along with the songs. Uh, so we started this band and we wrote a few songs at the time and uh, we got a drummer and a keyboard player and we played at a couple places. Um, one being that we got into a regular at was the new Jonathan Swifts. Oh, cool. Sure, so, I remember Jonathan and this Swifts. Was yeah. In Brighton, yeah. yeah. In Brighton now, in, in yep. Western Avenue, which sure. was right up the street from yep. where, originally where we moved to. Mm. Um, so we wound up running the Blues Jam there. Nice. Mm -hmm. Every Thursday night, I believe. And so we did that for a couple months. Um, met some other musicians. Gordon Beadle would show up. Um, a few Sax other people man. would show up. Yep. Mm. Uh, Gordon was with... Uh, Luther, uh, Luther Johnson Guitar at Johnson. The time. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, so we did that. The, Paul was in the, another band at the time, and they were getting busy. So he wound up leaving our band, and now we had this blues jam every Thursday night. We didn't have a singer. Mm -hmm. A drummer could sing one or two songs. So we started <laughs> using that to audition singers because we had no singers. So we would get up, do like three or four songs ourselves, and then bring up people like just so that we can get through the gig as well. Right. Mm -hmm. And one of those people was John Marconi. Mm -hmm. And John showed up. Johnny Bluehorn, morning Johnny Blue, yes, sir. <laughs> and he had the pork chop sideburns at the time. That's so cool. we were calling him Elvis. He was like, hey, mm -hmm. the Elvis guy's pretty good. <laughs> um, so I remember after doing a couple songs with him, we sat down, we were talking to him, and then we asked him if he played any instruments. He goes, oh, I, I played a trumpet. I'm like, oh, we gotta bring the trumpet next time. He goes, really, in a blues band? I'm like, yeah, why not? <laughs> so he was showed up the next, probably next week, and then he was in the band. Wow. So John replaced him originally in that band, which was the Roadhouse Sheiks. Yeah. And then I we were together for about too. two years or, or so wow. at the time. And mm -hmm. uh, we played at the original House of Blues and a couple of other places. We had some pretty good gigs at the time. Um, you had mentioned a big band that you filled in every once in a while with the... Uh, right, so when that band ended, John went on to join Mission of Blues. Mission of Blues, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, which was only a couple months later when he got into that, that band. And when that the other guitar player in the band, George Dennis, was having his, uh, his firstborn, uh, I wound up filling in in his place with playing with Steve and John and... Yep. Uh, uh, Jim Schultz was on drums at those time, uh, those days, original drummer, and Paul was on bass, Paul's nice. Magnolia. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, most those guys went to uh, win the uh, Battle of the Blues Challenge in 1999, I believe, and oh, went down mm -hmm. to Memphis in nice. 2000. Yep. Nice. Yep. Um, at Harper's, and, uh, we were both there for that night. So it was, uh, so I sat in them, uh, filled in with them for maybe a month or two so to speak. And then on their CDs, they did uh, songs that uh, we, me and John wrote back in the Roadhouse Sheiks. So cool. on the first album, there's a song called Knocked Out. And the second song, uh, second album, there's one called She's Got a Problem. Cool. And those were songs that we did in that band. Nice. Mm -hmm. 
Now, when you when you said you started writing, now and you had mentioned too about you know you like you know the rhythm and, and so forth. Like mm. when you do your writing, which comes first? Do your lyrics come first, or your or your melody? Um, it's always different. It's yeah. different all the time. A lot of times, I'll for me, if I come up with a concept, I'll in the shower. It's cliche, right, but sure. it happens. Like you're absolutely. in a silent moment. Oh, absolutely. Maybe a melody. And then I'll grab the iPhone and just, you know, start recording a melody. So a lot of things start with that or just a title. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I was trying to, there was a long period of time where I was just trying to become a better songwriter on my own. I kind of took a break when my son was growing up. My son's going to be 21 in March. But when he was young, I kind of took a little bit of a break from music. And, uh, and I started to, I put together a little recording studio in the basement. And that is kind of how the birth of One Dime Band, the the second coming kind of thing, mm -hmm. which was 2016, when John said, hey man, you want to record these songs that we wrote back in the Roadhouse Sheiks, which right. was in nine, early 90s, right. right? So that's how that, that's really kind of how it all, this, this part, this era of what we're doing now had started mm -hmm. off. But yeah, as far as songwriting between the two of us, that's how it might start. John, there are a couple of our songs. John had music already written, and he said, mm -hmm. what do you think of this music? And then I kind of did my part and put it together. And then the two of us kind of collaborate on, on lyrics and finish things off, you mm -hmm. know, and complete it, you know. Mm -hmm. You're going to do any of those originals today? Oh, yes. Yeah, I yeah. think we have uh, the majority, I think. Are, we had about yeah. six songs planned, and I think four of them are originals I believe so well yeah. I think this yeah. might be a good opportunity to take a little break and Excellent. rather than talk about your music maybe the folks at home can sit back and uh, listen to a Absolutely. little bit of it yes sir so yeah. folks sit We'd back and relax you're going to hear a couple of tunes from one dime band and we will be back in a few All right, we'd like to do one from our, uh, another one from our first CD. This is called uh, Bodhi. It's about Johnny's nephew. Skies are blue, the hills are rolling. Your smile's as big as that wedding tree. Your grandma's on, you're rocking. Mom and pa, blessed as can be. Hey, hey. and see all the joy you bring Everybody to hear you laugh in morning glory we cross that bridge to get to you Grandpa strong his hand for holding Standing on your own. Yeah.
They say life's like a bowl of cherries And you should save everyone Travel for me while my little boat is Wrap your arms round the rising sun Hey, hey, boat, boat Stay in the maze of no Dance and sing for the joy Continue now with a little uh, little muddy waters for you. I feel so good And I hope that I always will I feel like a jack out with a jenny Whoa, behind the hill I feel so good I 
We do kind of like the first version, well, I'd heard was a uh, Taj Mahal version, but so we kind of sort of cop his version a little bit. Not exactly, but. All right, here's a little folk blues. This is an old one. I don't think anybody knows who wrote it. It's called Karina. <laughs> Got a bird would say, but without my Corina, you sure don't mean, you sure don't mean a natural thing. She call my name Yes, baby, for a call Baby, for she call my name So, baby, you're my warm heart Baby, you're my warm heart flame Say, 
But without my Corina, don't show sure don't mean, show sure don't mean a natural thing. Go Rena Go Rena Say Go Rena Go Rena Go Rena Go Rena Go Rena Go Rena Long green. All right. All right we're going to take it out. We're going to take it on home with uh, the title track of our second CD. And this one is called Hoodoo and Holy Water. Said who do and holy water? Who do and holy water? Said who do and holy water? You got to get lost to be found when you wake up. All those empty bottles on the table. Can't remember just what you did the night before. Poison in your soul, nothing left to borrow. Bury in your gold, your pain and your sorrow. With hoodoo and holy water, said hoodoo and holy water. Yes, hoodoo and holy water. It's never too late. Come round when you're young. Got all your cards spread out on the table. But have your fun. You got to get it while you can. But time might carry you away if you let it. Said this mean old world. Won't always understand the hoodoo and holy water. Yeah. Hoodoo and holy water. Said hoodoo and holy water. Got to get lost to be found.
Say, who do you know? Got that holy water. Say, who do you, do you know? Got that, got that water for you. Said, who do you know? Holding that magic waterfall. Everyone, 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 Lord. Lord, 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 Lord. Said, who do you Who do in holy water? Who do in holy water? Who do in holy water? Said, never too late to come round. Said, who do? No, you got to get lost. Say, Lord, you got to get lost. Yes, to be Wow, boys. Nicely done. Thank Nicely you, done. Thank, Thank you. you. I, I hope you enjoyed that. that at home, folks. You're going to be hearing a little bit more in a little bit. So, um, you know, we talked a lot about your, your past music and your, your inspirations and so forth. Mm -hmm. Let's move it forward a little bit as to, um, you know, where you are now and, um, you know, what's been going on with you, let's say, over the last couple of years, you know, as your music mm -hmm. has progressed. You know, roll the clock back a couple of years and, and kind of go from there as to where your music progressed, where it is now, and maybe talk a little bit about where you want to take your music, what's going to be happening with you guys. You know, we'll talk a little bit about yeah. Memphis and so forth. So yeah. make a question out of that and We're definitely run with excited. it. <laughs> <laughs> you got something for this one, Johnny? Oh, jeez. Yeah, the last couple of years, you know. How'd you make up with COVID? How'd, how'd you make up with the COVID? Did that guy <laughs> knock you out? COVID the, knocked you out or what? It knocked us out in more ways than one, actually, right? I mean. Yeah, yeah. well, I work at a, at a hospital. Right, so it's, you're correct. Um, it, to me, it was going to work every day, and it was not much it's different. A nice part of it, I will say, is that there was absolutely no traffic. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah so I would zip in and out that, of Boston. Right? Amen to that. <laughs> uh, so I, I do kind of miss that. But we didn't see each other for uh, when COVID first happened for some time. And then we met up for some beers at a side of a river. We're like 20 feet apart. <laughs> each other. Yeah, it was so, ridiculous. Side of the river yeah, freezing you outside. You even hands, right? <laughs> um, and then we decided to use that same location, actually, to get together a month or two later when it got a little bit warmer. And... Yeah. perform right there on the side of the yeah. nice. play a couple songs. Where was this? Uh, this is right it's down next to the Malden. I think it's called the yeah. Malden River. It's actually on the other side of like where the Fellsway is. River is, that, is right. You know where the Port or? Southern is? The, kind yeah. of sort of, yeah. Port the Southern venue. Side of on that way? Yeah. Okay. It's, it's right on the All other right. side it, of it. Yeah. So you get a visual. It turns out that's a, it's the parking lot now for the casino. Okay. But yeah, it really wasn't open yet in those days. Oh, yeah. I was bike riding a lot, so I would be there's a bike trail that goes to my house and goes right to a couple of breweries. And so I would mm -hmm. bike to a brewery and grab a growler and then go hang out the river. And we nice. Meet and, mm -hmm. um, so we did that, but then we started doing a couple of videos like other people were doing. We had some software and uh, Paul would say, you want to record a song? And so I think most of them, I did my part first and then I sent them go, this is what I did. And then he would do his part. Mm -hmm. We and tried to, it, it, the, the appearance was to try to make it sent, look live. It's, right. it, I think yeah. acapella was the app that everybody right. was using. You know, I saw like something on the news where there were people, groups, chorus, choirs, and there were, everyone was, had done it remotely. And I guess you could, so you could do it with just a small group. And yep. so we started doing it as a duo. So some of that stuff's on our YouTube channel now still. But we tried to make it seem live. What I was trying to do was just keep us kind of afloat through this right. thing because yeah. We literally had finished and were releasing our second CD, which we were very happy about because we had some fantastic musicians. We had done it at um, Woolly Mammoth Sound mm -hmm. in Waltham, and uh, we were going to release it 
February, actually February 2020 is when we released that CD, and then it was all heck bro broke yeah. loose, and it was like, you know, we were planning like a, at Nine Wallace, we were going to try to plan a sure. CD release Victor with John Marconi yeah. we doing We had a bunch his. of gigs lined up. We had a cancel. We, so gigs, we really had three or four in the same day. I'm like, sure. We can't play at every place. So it we had quite a few crushed it. Yeah. gigs lined up all of a sudden. And I remember saying to him, 2020 is going to be our year. This is our yeah. year. <laughs> I know. Well, yeah, tin cans on, on the like tin cup else, on the corner with yeah. pencils. Everyone right? else went up in yeah. flames. It turned out to be the, pan the year, the COVID year. Yeah. But, um, but so that's what we did to try to keep things afloat were these videos. Yeah. And so we did, and our bass player at the time, uh, Neil McAvoy, is a great bass player, play, played upright bass for, we did an acoustic trio for a bit. And uh, and he was great with video. He had a couple of different, um, what do they call them, like uh, GoPro cameras. Yep. And we would set it up and we saw so at that location right by the Malden River there, there was a gazebo and we would do we nice. did a couple of videos. Yeah. Again, just to keep our presence out there and, um, there was a porch fest in Swampscott that we did virtual that year too. We did yeah. it in a, again, in a small lobby. We did a lobby. real estate office. We moved all yeah. the furniture in a real estate office. One of wow. properties and that we're I in was front of this at. fireplace, fake fireplace, but it was generating a bunch of heat. Right. And uh, so that was just the way we, that's what we did to kind of keep afloat during the pandemic to try to keep, you know, your, I guess your social media presence yeah. or whatever the you get. The first video you know, we so. did, I didn't even take my bathrobe on. I'm playing my bathrobe. <laughs> 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 yeah, you were the alone. You were alone. You didn't leave the house. I know. There was oh, some very man. creative. Now that I look at it, like, Jesus Christ, some very creative videos of people out there you know, <laughs> yeah. doing that oh, stuff, no, yeah. you know. Yeah. But, um, you know, you mentioned that, um, you know, with your CDs and you mentioned you've got some good performers on there. You know, you also yeah. mentioned Johnny Bluehorn. You know, yeah. we have a lot of yeah. common acquaintances, you know. Talk yeah. a little yeah. about your relationship with Johnny and, and some of the people who play on your CDs. Well, as you were mentioning before, right, there was the Roadhouse Sheiks that we had created in was early it? 90s, and then John replaced me as the singer. And then no, in your, on playing. your CDs? These guys oh. play on your oh, CDs? Yeah, yeah. On yes, your yes, CDs. Yeah. Yeah. So our first our CD was like, what would you call it, like a science experiment in my basement that I did, had really? put together the little basement studio, and then John had said, you want to record some of these old songs. And then suddenly, from that point, those song, those recordings, we were like, oh, this is maybe Pretty we should good, keep huh? going. It was with mostly this. us yeah. doing everything. Just to do all Drums, okay. bass. Yeah, we we, yeah, we yeah, played yeah. all the instruments. I okay. would have like five guitar tracks just because we could, because we had yeah, software right. that, yeah, they want to do this? I'm like, yeah, I'll do this too. Um, but John played. And John played on two, we had him come two in, tracks. And right. he actually did one track, which he was the, the horn section. So we double tracked him he did flugelhorn and then he did his, his trumpet part on one which was kind of like a funky it's like a like a funky blues number almost like a 70s uh, really vibe to it and then he and he played trumpet solo on one tune with some kind of a new orleans vibe to it and you know it was it was great so that was like the beginning of that and then the second album eventually when we did that one in the in the real studio um we had actually played all these little cafe gigs and right we the two of us raised all this money somehow uh, over the course of a couple of years, not even. And then we went to Woolly Mammoth with a friend of ours, Rob Ignazio, who I really wanted to mention because Rob is just an amazing engineer. And so Rob put together, he had worked in multiple studios in Boston, but he put together kind of, uh, he put feelers out and he said, well, we were having trouble our our original rhythm section. It kind of, we, we kind of parted ways. So Rob was like, oh, well, what about Paul Kahansky. I was like, what? He said, what Paul. about Chris Anzalone? So <laughs> Couldn't get Chris, any good guys, huh? It was yeah. just like, we were like, are you kidding me? Yeah. You know, uh, Allison Lizance, who- Allison, we, we, Mayana, sure. Played, we did know from back in the day, she was friendly with another close friend of ours, another musician, and I met her through, she played on one of my rock and roll band uh, demos that we did, uh, cassette demo, again, in the 90s. but got back in touch with Allison and brought her in. She did an amazing piano. Uh, accordion. Accordion. Yeah, she's, organ. She's, she's, so she's, she's, she did everything. You know, incredible. Well, you know, that whole band, I mean, you know, their, their band, you know, with Mayana, Eddie Shear, and all the oh, boys yeah. I love dogs. They're yeah. phenomenal. Yeah, so it, that was, I mean, we were just blessed to have, I, I know it's a cliche to use that word, but it was really a blessing because Rob kind of pulled everyone together. They were so kind. They were Right. So humble. These are like the best musicians we've ever then played with. Mario on, on sax. Mario Perret. Oh wow. Um, who played? So, so he and John were the rhythm, were the horn section, yeah. and and they both took the arrangement 
lead with it. You know, we gave them a couple little cues, but they arranged the horns on that second record and they knock just tracks out like that. Everything amazing, was done in a session. Amazing. Yeah, it's a, well, you get the ta- um, that kind of talent. It yeah, was, it was amazing. Really. You get um, that kind of talent. For the rhythm section, we ran through the songs once, if that once. Yeah, and then we said, "Oh, you want to do it this way?" And that's that that's how it. they went. We rolled with it. They yeah, changed right. a little bit. That will be originally thought, but like, no, this is what just happened. So let's do it this way. And that's yeah, and you have another uh, uh, CD you're working on. We are, yeah. Yep. And again, working with same Rob. folks or different people. You some got of lined the same. Some of the same. Uh, we we have an old, real old friend who is another great player who, strangely, lives out of state. He lives in Brooklyn now. He's originally from Southern New Hampshire, Romeo Dubois, and uh, Romeo is playing drums with us now. So he, over this past year, he has come up and played a few gigs with us, a few uh, electric gigs. Um, but for so he's on the on the record starting we did six rhythm tracks so far and then Romeo unfortunately got hurt he he had sh- uh, shoulder surgery mm. but Paul Kahansky is playing bass again for us which yep. is again just amazing um, but our friend Rob is now out in Glenville New York at his home he's got a he created a home studio out there which is fantastic so um, so we started it. So we're about halfway through now that. We've got six tunes done. Six, six basic done, tracks, and we'll have five nice. more. Nice to finish. And again, we're going to bring in some friends again to play on that. But right. you're um, still doing it at the Mammoth Studios. No, this no, is, is in Glenville, New York. Oh, at you're Rob's, doing it in New York. Rob's oh, home okay. studio. All right. the, uh, okay. Cool. Some, our guests will probably be recorded either remotely using their software or oh, over Paul's right. place. Or possibly at my house. Right. Yeah. Cool. We're doing it a little differently this time. Um, All right. Just because because Rob. Rob was in. He was local last time. Actually, no. He was he was traveling from New York to be like a, uh, a travel like a traveling engineer, and he was able to. Uh, what's the what's the word for it when he's an outside engineer using Woolly Mammoth? He he and Dave Minahan they had a good relationship, so he would let him cool. bring in acts, and and he would engineer. And when do you think the CD will be completed? Oh. We're hoping this year. This year, yeah. uh, we're hoping well, so. Uh, you're running should, out of year. We, yeah. <laughs> well, no, not. I'm sorry. 2023. Supposed, <laughs> this was originally supposed to come out during 2021. Of course. We're, we're going to do a four-song EP. Oh, okay. Because of COVID, COVID but we yeah. really wasn't playing more, so we started yeah, writing sure. songs again, and yep. then all of a sudden, uh, um, we started writing more and more songs. Like, well, we keep writing them up enough for an album. Right. Mm-hmm. So uh, then we thought, oh, let's do half as an EP in the second half. Anyway, it looks like it's going to be one, a complete album. Nice. Yeah, and, we're uh, going to go that direction. Alana Katz Katz is going to be playing on a couple songs, as well as Johnny Bluehorn. Nice. Mm-hmm. Uh, Mario, Mario as well. Right, um, sure. Alison as well. Wow. Yep. Um, the same crew, I think. Same it's going to be a winner. For the most part. And our good friend from uh, New York as well that we went to middle school and high school with, cool. uh, Tim Curry. Mm-hmm. Who's known in the South Shore as Tequila Tim? That name rings yes. a bell. And I think I've seen that name around. Yeah, he gigs a yeah. lot. Uh, he's from Hingham, and he lives in the South okay. Shore. He yeah, wrote uh, on our CD. He wrote uh, "Hard Luck Daddy," one of the songs oh, cool. he wrote mm-hmm. for us to perform, and he sings harmonies on our first CD, that CD, and this upcoming and CD. Guitar, he'll, be, awesome. Awesome. he'll be singing uh, cool. as well. Mm-hmm. Now, speaking of singing, uh, let's go back uh, maybe. Uh, month or two when all of a sudden you got wind of this thing called the Boston Blues Society Blues Channel yeah. Blues yep. Blues Challenge say that 10 times fast <laughs> <laughs> how'd you guys get hooked up with that I know the story but tell the folks at home uh, well oh. it was kind of fun it was funny because the day at work I was sitting killing time on my lunch break or something and I see that they were looking for you know the Blues Society right. was looking for acts for it and I was like wow that's interesting I can't believe they and I kind of glanced over it and I think John had said the same that he had seen it maybe before I did and we said well we don't really have the band together right now waiting for Romeo to heal up and we don't have a rhythm section at the moment so uh, and we had been doing some gigs just the two of us we had been doing the back to the uh, it's actually how it started in 2016 was really just acoustic duo so um, so next thing I know I'm literally 10 minutes later Mark Ryder is calling me the president and he uh, he's saying you guys would you guys be interested in participating in this I said yeah we would except we don't really have a band at the moment <laughs> we just and he said oh no there's a solo, solo duo, duo category we said oh I said we're in <laughs> let me call John so 
That's how we got. That? That's how it started. Yeah. yeah. We, I thought Holly was involved in that too. Didn't Holly give well, you a push? I think Holly certainly did. Yes. I think uh, Holly gave Holly Harris. Mark, I mean, she's yeah. been a champion for us yes, she uh, has. since the first CD we got to her, and she she plays your music on her show, playing yeah. us from the beginning, and uh, she has been wonderful. I mean, we run into her in Salem once in a while when we're playing at East Regiment Beer Company, and uh, I've yeah. been running to her for years at yes. shows. But, yep. Um, so we're at a lot of. Well, it's hard not to because I think she's at all she's of them. At everything. <laughs> exactly. I swear she's cloned. That's <laughs> amazing, right? So yes, yeah, so she, I believe she might have said mentioned the name, and uh, and that's how Mark, you know, got a hold of our number. However, it, it worked, and I was like, uh, it was fantastic. I yeah. couldn't believe it. So we were right in, and we sent that that entry fee immediately. Good, you know? and so, you know, I I had, I had one check left at work, so I had to. <laughs> Old-fashioned checks. Really? I would keep in my drawer at work because sometimes we'd have to do things like, oh, you want to get this? I'm like, oh, I have a check. I'll, I'll send a check right, for, yeah. for right, band right. expenses. The band yeah. fund, right. Yeah. And he said, we need to send a check. I opened my drawer. I'm like, well, I got one check left. <laughs> it just turns said, out to be. Mail it fast. <laughs> That's the name of your next band. One check left. <laughs> one check left. <laughs> We're out of oh, dimes. Now we're funny. out of checks. That's funny. <laughs> but, uh, but you yeah, got to get I, a deadline Saturday. I was, I think it was Tuesday. Yeah, yeah exactly. I said, John, mail the check. Yeah, um, so I, I had the uh, privilege of you know doing some MCing of that you know with Holly. And um, how did it feel after the set, which had some good competition? You guys were oh, up against yes, some good yes, competition. Was, you know, Alan and Gary both were. How great, did it feel yeah. that you know after that uh, hour and a half, two hours, when I stood up there and announced your name as uh, winners, and you were on your way to Memphis? What was that initial initial feeling? Well, it felt it was amazing, but the funny story about that <laughs> is that we didn't hear you announce us because <laughs> we were. <laughs> Were you outside? So, so we someone the, had told us we that. Back room, I think you're you in the back room. We were in the back room. Get off because, stage. Yeah, ah. Someone had said after we finished. I think you guys went over. You know, there's the, there's strict time. You know, uh, limit went. twenty minutes, and so you lose points if you go over. And someone had come up to me afterwards and said you guys went over by a little bit, and I said, oh no. So I'm in the back room. I'm apologizing to him. I think we I'm talked like, about that a little right, bit yeah. when you could so, off. He <coughs> thought he blew talked it. about that. I was like, we blew. I blew right. it. I was rambling on, talking like I am right now. Right before and, we went on, less than a minute we went on. I'm in the back room tuning my uh, yep, resonator yep, over yep. there, and I break my D string. Oh, he comes in and goes, we got to go on. I go, I just broke a string. So change the string quickly. Then I break the string winder. Oh, geez. So now I needed him and to I'm hold. I'm doing meditation. I'm like, okay, <laughs> deep breath. Other breaths, than that, everything you know, was fine, right? Fine. Yeah. So Don't be nervous. my blood was pumping a little bit. I needed him to hold the, the string through the eye hook. Of, and I'm there hand winding. <laughs> and they say our name again. Oh, I tune God. up really quick. We get on stage. Um, we do That's our set. Fun. Then there was, oh, we went over. So like, oh, we screwed up. It wasn't, like, it wasn't a lot. We really, yeah. We were no, just it was like, a minute. We, we started thought. thanking everybody. Yeah, and, I, think, and, I think it was, so. you know, I, I think it was a little more strict. <laughs> you know, there was some room in there. I mean, because yeah. I was keeping my time. You know, mm. I had the time yeah. and they had the time. Mm. And I was doing it as soon as I walked off the stage. I don't know when they were doing it, but we were like a minute or we were like okay. a minute, minute and a half oh, off okay. Okay. between oh, their okay. clock and mine. Oh, okay. Right. Because okay. I'd be looking at it and say, well, you know, they got two minutes left. And yeah. then, you know, uh, you know, Paul might walk over and he says, you know, I, or I could yeah. see him kind of signaling you. I'm saying, saying he's like got two minute. minutes left, yeah. you know. Yeah. Then at one point, you know, he came over. Some, somebody came over and yelled at me. He said, they were on there. I don't know if it was you or not. You know, they were on too long. And I said, <laughs> not according to my watch. Oh, so okay. I, I well, really don't think that that really had much of a bearing on it. But I can understand you thinking that. Yeah, right, exactly. We, so we rehearsed. I can understand you so thinking that. We timed the set multiple times. Yeah, the set was 17.30. We like, oh, that's perfect. Trying to make as long sure as he goes, as long as I don't talk too much. Exactly. So you found out that you won. You came out. Or some, how'd we you did. find out that well, you won if you were in the so back? This was the really funny thing. So we come wandering. So you must have announced it. We're in the back. We didn't hear it. We come wandering out onto the floor. And I'm just thinking, oh, they're going to they're gonna announce both category winners at the end of the I just yeah, thought it would be know. at the end of the right. night. I didn't know it was going to be between. Right. So we're standing in the back, and we're just like, you know. Yeah. And Charlie Abel, the club owner, yep. right, yeah. he's looking at us, and he's kind of giving us the eye, and we're going, hey. I and was mad. He, yeah, we went over. That's yeah, what I'm thinking. We're right, right, saying, right. Oh, man. And we're just not happy about that. So we're thinking we lost, you know. And then he walks over to John. He goes, congratulations. <laughs> yeah. Like, he shakes what? my hand. He goes, congratulations. I go, oh, you liked our set. And he looked at me. He goes, 
He said, no, congratulations. <laughs> so I repeat myself. Oh, right. you liked our set. He goes, you don't know. I'm like, no what? He goes, no you're clue. going to Memphis. We no <laughs> I, he's standing next to me. So I tap him oh, on the shoulder. God. I go, dude. And he's like, what? I go, we're going to Memphis. <laughs> yeah, because so I think, because I was over on the side. I think it came <laughs> so over to what, my side or something. It goes, I, I forget what you said, but it was like, I think we just won. Did we just win? <laughs> something <laughs> something was, to that effect. It you was know? really, yeah. But at that point, that then we were pretty excited. Yeah. yeah. I'm calling my wife, and I'm like, she's just all pumped. And I was like, yeah, we actually won. I can't believe it. You know? Yeah. I told her the story. Yeah, that was, a, that was a fun night. It was a great and then, time. We then were, just a couple of weeks ago, you know, you guys came back again, you know, for the uh, the tribute down there. And, you know, that was that was a fun night. With You know, we had Johnny Bluehorn was there. Yes. Right, right. Yep. You know, Holly was up there playing on her play gym guys. Yeah, yeah. You know, Bob Wolfman. Bob Wolfman joined us. Yeah, that was great. You know, was great. That, was, that was a fun night. Now, are you guys ready for Memphis? What are you doing differently? How are you preparing for, for Memphis? Uh, well, and do you know anything about it? You know, what it's like? Have you talked to people who have been there? We, well, John told us a little bit what it was like because, yep. you know, he was there 20 years ago or so. Yep. Yep. Um, I've been following this for the past few years. And yep. what I've been doing every year is finding whoever winds up winning the final uh, uh, challenge, I always wind up buying their CD. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I've been doing it, and then I, this new new artist to me. So I've I've been discovering some new artists right. from uh, uh, Mr. Sip uh, oh, yeah. to, to a whole bunch of other artists uh, these past couple of years. And um, Selwyn Birchwood. Yeah, Selwyn. Selwyn. He brought We've been me. Selwyn. Amazing. Yeah. He brought uh, me amazing. to see them at Bull Run, and yep. we were just and, like blown uh, away. Uh, That's how John found them. We found a Reggie, the sax player, went to Berkeley, and so, yeah. you know. I'll tell you what impressed me the other night. I mean, I, I knew all the bands, uh, but, um, you know, Robin Hathaway and, you know, the Big Mouth Band. Yes. Oh, man. You know, they Robin's were phenomenal. Awesome. Awesome. She was great. And she is one of the best she singers was great. ever. She hit that one note during that uh, yeah, the, the initial uh, challenge. I'm sitting there along Yeah. It, it, it was, it was literally a coin toss. It was a coin toss. I'm, I'm, you know, thinking in my head, you know, who would I vote for? And mm-hmm. between, you know, Matt Swanton, you know, who blew the roof off. Oh, yeah. You know, I mean, band. you know, awesome that, I think I think it was I think it was a point, a point either way. There was wow. one one separating point because they come up to me and they said, Frank, hold off, hold off. We don't have the results yet. It's oh, so wow. close. Yeah. We can't figure it out. So it took them a couple of extra minutes. I could see that to make sure that. that they got everything right. And mm-hmm. I think it was like one flip. I think it was like one one flip either way wow. was a difference between like all of them. I wouldn't have wanted. I to think I think I make think that it was. That was I tough. wasn't a voter and I didn't see any of the stuff. But I think there was a two point swing among the four of them. Oh wow! And I think a one point swing among like three of them. <laughs> You know, yeah, it, it was. They were it all was great that bands. close. I mean, it was. A, it was that close. It was a great night. I you know, enjoyed it. It was, it was nice that we could relax and say, "Oh, okay, now we now we can enjoy these these bands." Yeah, I, I hear it's a pretty it's a it's a pretty whirlwind time down there. You'll be playing your fannies off. Yeah, you know that you yeah. play in all kinds of different yeah. venues, and you're all over the place having a great time. And there's some great talent down there. We went yeah. to Memphis in oh man, eighty seven. Eighty seven. We drove wow. down. It was uh, Elvis's 10th anniversary, wow. and uh, I've got directions from MapQuest at the time, and there was obviously <laughs> no internet. I, that doesn't really yeah. doesn't age So they mailed, they mailed what you could print out eventually later, how to get the map. So we had right. like, these directions how to get there, and I'm like, oh, we're going to drive, and I got a, a tent. I'm like, we're going to camp outside. That's got cool. A tent. It's not going to cost us more. 21 20, at the time. That's cool. So that was the deal. Three of us went down. We nice. drove straight, and we got the, the pilgrimage. And we stayed at the campground across from Graceland, actually. Nice. Yeah. Next uh, to a Piggly Wiggly, Wiggly across the street. We ate at the 7-Eleven where you can That's get the, cool. the hot dogs with 30 cents or whatever they were at the time. Yeah, it was, was Shoney's for breakfast. I remember that. Yep. We um, did that. That's then we awesome. walked around Beale Street a lot. Uh, it obviously was not as built up as, as right. it is nowadays back mm-hmm. then, but there was a lot of street performers we got to see. Right. Yeah, there was a lot of very uh, there was cool There was like this outside courtyard. Um, I remember it all being stone and just uh, steps all around and then a big stage across. And we watched a couple bands play there. Nice. Mm-hmm. And then if you just walked anywhere in Beale Street down a little alley, you would hear music, and there's just a guy sitting there playing guitar. Right. Um, so that was really great seeing all that and experiencing right. that firsthand and so you got a little taste of it 
Right. You yeah. know, because I have some friends, you know, a lot of my friends have gone down there over the years and uh, either played there or just went to see the competition. And they say it's just pretty wild. It's just, mm. you know, it's no matter where you turn, no matter where you look, you know, somebody's playing. Something's happening. And right I guess I, I don't know how the point systems work. Do they explain how the point systems work, how, you know, how they vote? You have to play at different clubs and we different did read venues the rule. or something. Yeah, we read the rules are pretty strict. But, uh, yeah, yeah, it's like I think it's you play get to play twice a minimum. Yeah, uh, twice, and then I think then you either go on to semifinals or you yeah hang the out. quarters and then the <laughs> semis and all of that stuff. So we yeah. we've been reading on the site, and actually we ran into Aaron Harp and uh, Jim Countryman. Yeah, at uh, they're going to be down Southern, there. right? Yeah. So they're coming they, on the show. We just happened oh, awesome. to oh they're, great they're coming on in a few weeks, if not the beginning of the year. They're oh, coming on. I was talking to Jim and Aaron the other day. And they've been down awesome. multiple times, so they told they kind of gave us a little bit of the skinny. Well, they're, they're going to be like, there, you know. so they can probably yeah. you right. know show you some of the ropes. Yep, yep. That's we're, awesome. We were going to try to go see them the third. Uh, I think it's actually this coming Saturday. I think yeah, playing at the port. Yeah, we have an event coming up that uh, people should be aware of. Um, you know, get down to the Boston Distillery. Yes. You know, there's going to be a fundraising yep. event for you guys. That's going to be a great night. I know you guys are going to be there. Who else is going to be there? I think. Uh, well, luckily for us, it's going to be Johnny Marconi. Johnny Marconi. Marconi is going to guest with us. And Tony Lynn Washington. Tony Lynn Washington, Washington Tony the Lynn queen Washington, of the blues. Which yeah. is good an friend, Tony. absolute honor for us. So, yeah. um, and then, uh, obviously, the Matt Swanton. Yeah, and Matt. That's going to be a good night. That's yep. going to be a really good night. Now, is there anything that, you know, we haven't touched on or anything we haven't talked about that, you know, you'd like to throw out there before we get into how people get in touch with you and any of that kind of stuff? Um, yeah, I think we've we kind of hit all the bases. long and hard about yeah. ourselves. <laughs> <Really? laughs> we don't, aren't crazy about doing necessarily, but, hey, you know, well, you know I'm gonna, more I'll, people I'll, to get know, to I'll know I'll throw a little, little bit spin about on, us. You know, one of my usual questions, <laughs> uh, you know, I've stumped a lot of people on there, and if you watch the show, you know it's probably going to come. And so if um, I'll put a little spin on the uh, Mount Rushmore and say that, uh, uh, make it easy for you. You know, if you could, uh, you know, have lunch with any musician, past, present, uh, who would you, you want to have lunch with? Uh, I would say Buddy Guy. Buddy Guy. Mm. Well, you still have your chance. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Why Buddy so Guy? Buddy and Greg, his son. Uh, hello? <laughs> Why, Why Buddy Guy? Uh, I was introduced to Buddy Guy in the late 80s uh, at Night Stage sure. in Cambridge. And um, I went with the drummer I was playing with in Blue Valentine at the at the time, he knew the keyboard player, which I want to say was Dave Maxwell, uh, who great. would fit in with a bunch of people for the sit in all the time. Normal. So we were sitting at the the bar, which was one big long bar, and it had the stools. And but a guy was wireless at the time, so this is '80s. So it wasn't didn't see too many wireless right. guitar that players. Was big back then. Well, he was wireless, and still the drummer went over to go over and sit where Dave was, leaving the stool next to me open. Of course, the place is packed. I just had this empty stool. Buddy's now gets off the stage, goes behind the bar, grabs himself a drink. He's playing. He's making himself a drink. He's drinking, playing. So you know, <laughs> being entertained, and just watching. Yep, didn't miss yep, a note. Yep. And then comes right next to me, where wow. the empty stool was, and I'm sitting there going. At the time, I didn't really. I couldn't grasp exactly what was happening, which exactly, is blowing my mind. Right. Um, so I've been seeing him since. Uh, God, how many times I must have every album. His farewell um, tour is coming to yes, where? Yes, it Blue Ocean. Where is it? The Blue. It's going to be a Hampton Beach. Hampton Beach Hampton Casino. Casino. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. June. I June eighth, I believe. Yeah, June. <laughs> so I'll be going up there to see him. Cool. Um, he's still. Well, you met now, uh, You met Duke Kelly. Duke Kelly, who played right, drums. Duke, Coco uh, Taylor. Yeah, Duke yeah. Coco Taylor, and uh, oh, yeah, he, he was, was a good great, friend of Bubby. Yeah, he was great. Yeah. So who would you have lunch with? Who would you sit at the table with? Man, that is a, that's a tough question. For Come me. on, Just, you had five minutes God. to think on that. Come I know, on. but I it's there's so so many. I'm really trying to just think of who would be the most fun. I think like I'm thinking like maybe Ginger Baker. If he was <laughs> Ginger <that>. Baker, <laughs> man, that would be a trip. He'd probably punch me in the face or something. But um, yeah, it, it, or maybe I should say it would be J.J. Gray. You know, from J.J. Gray and Mofro, because then I can invite my wife, and then that would make her. 
entire, I don't know JJ Gray. That would make her entire life. Oh, you should check out JJ. Yeah, yeah. He's quite a quite a soul man. He's amazing. From uh, I think he's from yeah. Northern Florida. Wow. Um, he sings on some of Shamika Copeland's albums. Really? They do a couple songs. So he was really? he's a, alligator from Dead. Yeah. Yeah. He Talk was about a alligator. voice. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh my God. Oh yeah, John's a Shamika fan as well. Wow. I saw um, her uh, back. I think it was October, or late September. Down at uh, outside the Narrows, at that outside, oh, you know, they okay. have the outside concerts. Mm -hmm. I've been to the indoor. Yep. Yeah. yeah, thought I died She's and went to heaven. Right? Oh yeah. my God! And the sweetest pie, you mm -hmm. know, very friendly, very sweet. But mm -hmm. boy, can she! You know, you hear her CDs, you hear her records, but you see her in person, man. This blew me away. Mm. Blew we were in the Roadhouse Sheiks. Johnny Copeland was playing at Burke's. Remember Ed Burks? Oh, sure, Ed dad, Burks. Right? I was, and, I was uh, going to ask you Ed Burks earlier. I, I grew Ed. up down the street from Eddie oh, Burks. Okay. I grew up in Mission Hill. So oh, Johnny okay. Copeland yeah. was yeah. playing there, and after between sets, you know, the dressing room was on the basement there, yeah. hmm. and uh, they knew we were a band at the time. And said, "You guys, you want to go meet him? I'm like, are you kidding me?" So we went downstairs and hung out with Johnny Copeland in the basement. Wow. I still have his autograph at the time. We were talking to him. And well, Luther used to hang down the uh, guitar, yep. Luther Johnson. You know, yep. everybody mm -hmm. played that. Mm -hmm. Cheryl Arena was down. All these people yeah. that I knew. I was in high school, you know, and, and, you know, we were, you know, turn the microphone off with the Catholic nuns, you know. <laughs> Eddie, you know, he would, he would allow us, he'd sneak us a beer. You know, we yeah. could go in at 18, 17, 18, 19, you know, we'd go in and listen to the music and everything. Every nice. once in a while, he'd, he'd give us a beer. Yeah, yeah. Totally different back then than it is now. Well, right, right, right. You right, know, right. totally <laughs> different as it was now. But, you know, that was a great place. But uh, yeah. great music so many people there. who yeah. I must yeah. have seen, I, I could have even seen you there and not known that this goes that far back. It's possible. It, it's quite you possible. Know? I remember seeing Mighty Sam McLean there. Yeah. Um, First time we saw Tinsley Ellis was there. We were sitting like here, and he was. I don't right remember there. Tinsley. I saw mm -hmm. hanging with Tinsley yeah. a couple of years ago at the Marshfield Fair. I didn't realize oh, that okay. he was down there. Yeah, yeah he played it at Burke's. Um, wow. And he was amazing, just being so cool. He blew our mind just being that close to him, like you know. Oh yeah, um, that's cool. So that how can good, um, good how can people get a hold of you guys? How can they find your music? How can they get a hold of you? Uh, well, we have a website which we do maintain. Believe it or not, uh, one dime band .com. So we were able to not catch. the one dime band. No, not no. the. It's just one, one dime, dime band. band. I sometimes we go by acoustic one dime band now because of the fact that one to let people know duo. that we're not the or the acoustic the duo yeah. the, the acoustic two. Acoustic two. But that's mainly because then they can they can email us through that. We also have a Facebook page. We yep. have an Instagram page. So. Um, yeah, that's the easiest thing. We'll to put do that info us. up on the screen. Sure. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Um, and then we're on all the streaming services. And yes. Right. So Spotify. Spotify. If anyone wants yeah. to you can also listen to music off our uh, cool our web page as well. We have YouTube. Yes. Music we have a YouTube channel. channel as well. uh, we have yeah. YouTube video channels. Which yep. Has yep. Some of our. Yeah, videos you've got some gigs coming up. You know, videos. you've got a couple things that you know might be too late for the show. But you know, you can you know you play up around the North Shore, but you're certainly yep. going to be branching around the South Shore. You know. Oh yeah. If you really want to We're, see uh, these guys get down to the Boston Harbor Distillery, you know that's going to be a great right. night. That's yes. what uh, January Thursday, January fifth. Yep. Yep. Thursday the fifth. Yep. Have you been there before? Music at eight. No, I've only seen shows on Great Little on Room. Facebook. To be honest great Little you. Room. Looks great. Yeah, it looks it's beautiful. you know very quaint, very quaint. Uh, you know Frank Sullivan, uh, Steve Cate. They run a they run a great place down there. Yeah, Plenty looks, of parking. Looks great. So it's just a great place to go to. Nice. Come on out, folks. Yeah, we're raising more money for Memphis. We need a little bit more for our hotel. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll have the tip jar on the screen at the end of the show. <laughs> But there are some GoFundMe pages out there, you know, yes. the great John yeah. Hall, you know, a great supporter, yes, thank you, John. Uh, the Boston Blues Society, John has been, everyone you know, has been. John Ryder, Beverly Dancy, uh, you know, Paul, Paul McNeil, yep. you know, mm -hmm. everyone all, has been yeah, so all great people, you super know, to us certainly a shout out to John Hall, you know, John yes. Hall is a huge supporter. And he's one of the backbones of what's going to be happening at the distillery. And yep. I'm sure you're going to be playing at some of his gigs as well. We're hoping to, oh, yes. I've been speaking with yes. him, and I, I hope that that, yeah. that happens. We're going to make yeah. that happen. So, so. Um, so, guys, I, I really want to thank you for coming on today. I hope you oh. had as much fun our as pleasure. I did. Yes, oh, our pleasure. And, uh, thank you. You're welcome. And ladies and gentlemen at home, as I always say, I wouldn't be able to do this show without the fine people at SMAC. 
We got Robert Teller. We got Luke in there pushing the buttons and controlling everything and making us look and sound pretty. And I always encourage you to go out and support your local musicians and go out and support music in general. These are the guys that you can go out and see. Sometimes you can see them in places for nothing. Sometimes it might cost you five bucks and a beer and a pizza, and you're going to be in for a hell of a treat. So support your musicians. So for everybody here at Smack, and thank you guys once oh, again for the you. One Dime Band. I am Frank Walsh. As always, tune in and tune on.